like to open the meeting, please? It is now 6.05 in response to the, our meeting that we held on July 19th of 2017. We extended for a two week layover, um, but uh, to our demise, when we published or entered into the meeting that it was August 2nd that we would have it and we couldn't because the planning board um, was having a meeting that night. So we thought, well, we would just do it August 1st. Um, but I guess that does not fall into the rules of proper uh, notification. So our lawyer from, the, from uh, KP Law, uh, Jeff Blake, I'm gonna have him explain what has gone on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As, as Mr. Chairman said, my name is Jeff Blake and I'm from KP Law, your town council. Um, I, I became aware today that in fact, um, the, 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 the prior meeting was held on July 19th had been continued at that meeting until August 2nd. Under Chapter 40A, Section 11, there are certain notice requirements that need to be adhered to. Um, and one of those is that it needs to be published in a paper for two consecutive weeks and not uh, and not a hearing not held 14 days prior to that publication. So the first hearing on July 19th was done under the law, under the case law, provided that a, a, a notice and, the, and, a, and a, a meeting is continued to a date certain, uh, one notification is sufficient. But at that meeting, they have to continue it to a date certain. Here you see that, and I'm sure that most, if not all of you were actually in the hall at the time, they continued it to August 2nd. Today is August 1st. They subsequently changed that date, and I'm sure a lot of you got notification. Um, but it, it's, it's my opinion that because of that lapse, there may be a notification issue. Now, um, I have spoken with the, uh, the petitioner's counsel, and petitioner's counsel is willing to uh, agree to uh, the way we would do this is we would continue this meeting tonight till tomorrow night at which time a quorum of this board would again meet and then continue the meeting to a date certain so that we've, we've met the, the, the August 2nd requirement and then two weeks out we would hold the hearing again. That way if anybody was in the July 19th meeting and they hadn't looked at, at, the, at the website and other postings and they decided to come here on, July, uh, on August 2nd, they would be able to come in See the planning board here, I was right that the ZBA here, and the ZBA would then let them know that it's been continued to a date. So, cal uh, the uh, council for the petitioner has agreed to this, uh, and I, I guess it's now up to the board to determine however they want to proceed. And I certainly would entertain any questions that, you, that the board members may have. Do you have any questions for him? No. No. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I just want to, on behalf of uh, Clarence Snyder, uh, for the record, Gary Brackett, I just want to confirm that Attorney Flake and I did have a chance to speak before the meeting tonight, and I understand his concern with the technical issue of notice. Uh, given the importance of this matter, we don't want to proceed if there's going to be any type of a notice defect. So when he and I spoke, I suggested that since you have a post meeting tonight, you can vote to adjourn this meeting to tomorrow night, continue this meeting to tomorrow night, and tomorrow night is the designated night, as Mr. Flake said, when you had voted at your last hearing to continue the second, you can then vote to continue the matter, and hopefully you'll agree to continue it for two weeks to the 16th, because this is a matter, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board, as you know, that has been, uh, I would say, festering for some period of time, um, and I think there's, a, obviously, there's a strong interest and having this board voting uh, up or down on the appeal that, that Mr. Snyder has taken from the CEO's, uh, the zoning enforcement officer's decision. So if the board is willing, I realize it's some inconvenience for three of you to meet tomorrow night, but if you're willing to continue tonight to tomorrow night, vote tomorrow night to continue the public hearing to the 16th, but I think we'll be able to proceed without any issue of a notice defect. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, James Earhart, counsel to Mr. Holcraft. Uh, there are, in our opinion, uh, also Attorney Gary Bridgman on behalf of Mr. Holcraft, there's a, one major procedural problem with that that we can see. Uh, Mr. Holcraft never got formal notice, or indeed informal notice, of tonight's hearing. Um, there's no certified mail, 
There's no regular mail. There's no constable. Indeed, the only reason I know about today's hearing is because I read it in the Quaybog Current down in Sturbridge. And Mr. Holcraft, in informal conversations with the chairman and the clerk, found out about it. Um, Mr. Holcraft is the owner of the land. He is the one who will be at detriment. The board rules against him. And quite frankly, our reading of the statute is that without formal notice to the landowner or the one to be aggrieved, the hearing can't go forward. So if you were to continue this tomorrow, that would be an invalid hearing, much like tonight's is. He needs to get formal notice by constable or certified mail of this hearing. And additionally, beyond that, we believe he may have a planning board hearing tomorrow night. But I would ask the, 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 the board to continue to a later date, 14 days plus, so that we can assuage any concerns that we have of the formal notice requirements under the statute. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with all due respect to uh, Mr. Earhart, yes. um, his suggestion that Mr. Holdcraft is entitled to notice by constable or certified mail is not supported by the statute. Mr. Holdcraft was here on the very first night. He chose to leave. Uh, therefore, he's fully aware of these proceedings. He left on his own volition, despite the fact that he's the subject, his property the subject is here. I would cite to the 1975 appeals court case of Casper versus the Board of Appeals of Watertown, that once you receive notice of a hearing, you're subject to notice of continuing hearings, and also, even absent specific notice tonight, Mr. Holdcraft is represented by his attorney. So since his attorney is here, mm -hmm. Mr. Holdcraft, by implication, knows exactly what's going on. So there's no constable service requirement, no certified mail requirement. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I may respond. Um, One second, it, please. Yes. Th thank you. Um, I, I do agree with Attorney Brackett. Uh, once the, and that's the whole reason why we need to open tomorrow night. Because what we did is, I, I have to presume that Mr. Holcraft was made aware of this hearing, the, the last hearing, and was served the last time. Once that's been done, and it doesn't, need, it doesn't have to be by sheriff or constable. Once that was done, he then knew or should have known, well, he, I believe he came to the hearing and he left. Um, it was continued to August 2nd, so he does know that. Notwithstanding that, he's got his representatives right here. So he, he, has, he has noticed, he does know he's gonna be here. So um, I don't believe that there is an infirmity with respect to that, that type of notice. Um, so I, I think that you, you could go forward. Uh, with Based on that. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chip, one quick response if I may. Um, respectfully, I, I would disagree with that proposition. It's no different than if you foreclose on a person's house, he reads it in the paper. He doesn't get formal notice, doesn't make the foreclosure valid. Secondly, even more importantly, Mr. Holcraft, we believe, never got formal notice of the original hearing to which this was continued of. Um, we don't believe there's any proof of constable, certified mail of the original hearing. Publication of the paper will not suffice for an owner of land to be aggrieved by the action of the board. So, at the very least, we'd have to have proof he got formal notice of the first hearing to continue this hearing to continue to a later hearing. So my advice really would be to avoid any issues if this does go to court, that you start fresh, reschedule, give proper constable hearing, so that me and my office can properly prepare uh, for this hearing. Because right now, there are foundational notice issues on Mr. Holcraft's rights moving forward. It just seems, instead of continuing it tomorrow, which will protest that notice, and if the board rules against him, then we'll just have one more basis to oppose it. So I would start from scratch, get a new hearing, give constable service, and then we can move forward. Despite what counsel says, I disagree, and I suspect it's a period where Judge Price is going to do it. Well, uh, if I may, yes. um, there are a couple of other issues going on here. Under Chapter 48, Section 11, it's there is, there, there is a hundred day, you, ha you have 100 days to make your decision, right? It, it's an appeal um, to a uh, determination by the ZEO that the permit hadn't expired. You have 100 days to make that decision. The 100 days expires on, I believe it's August 4th. So we need to get written authorization or, or written, uh, a, a written agreement from, from the petitioner to extend this. And that's what, they're, well, that's what they're doing here. With respect to the notification, that, would, that would, should have been given to, to Mr. Holcraft for the first hearing, he was here. He was here. He was notified. So he was here. He had an opportunity. And again, he was here. He's got counsel now. They're going to continue it out two weeks. He'll have an opportunity to, 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 to make his defense to the extent that he's going to make one. 
discussion, Mr. Chair. Um, me personally, I believe all the parties are here. We can do this tonight. Um, that's my opinion. If this board chooses not to do that, I would recommend not meeting tonight and setting a meeting in the future that can be properly published. Um, I agree. I think, but I mean, we need to, as it was published for tomorrow night, we should meet tomorrow night. Well, technically, it wasn't published. We, we addressed it. Everybody well, it was published on video. I mean, that's. No, then it was, we had newspaper yeah. reporters that were here, that yeah. are here. It, it, it was very well advertised. The people that are going to be here are going to be yeah, here. Our biggest concern, though, too, is that we have that 100 day notification. And if that's up on the 4th, and obviously the petitioner has to okay to extend that out for those two weeks. That's his right to do that. Or he, he, he cannot, it's, that was his, you know, his motion that whether he would extend it or not. I mean, we go out to the 100 days, it's, you know, it's all done. But he is willing to go. Mr. Chairman, uh, we are willing to uh, right. grant an extension in writing. We want to have the board vote on the merits. We would have a right to a constructive approval of mm -hmm. our appeal um, under the statute if the decision is not rendered within 100 days from the date of the filing. But once again, in order to reduce any possible issues on a further review, whether it's a Superior Court judge or a Land Court judge, that we want to make sure that we give you the proper right to do this by notice and also that we extend the time for filing the decision. And, and just, I'll just respond once again to Mr. Earhart. I know that town council has already weighed in on this, but if he reads the Casper decision, it's very clear. It's a zoning issue. If you show up at a hearing and then you try to claim later, I didn't get proper notice as a basis for appeal, the fact that you showed up at the hearing basically dissolves any notice defect. So the fact that Mr. Earhart is here tonight, Mr. Holcraft was here two weeks ago. There is no notice issue, and there's no requirement, as Mr. Earhart suggested. Mr. Chair, sure, that, that's my argument for continuing tonight. Sure. Another two minutes. I got a question. Yes. Yes. Is there a defect in having the uh, hearing tomorrow night? Is there a defect in the notifications for tomorrow night also? Mm -hmm. The only question I would think is, I don't know whether under the open meeting, yeah. you have two statutes. I mean, you've got the open meeting law, which requires a notice of posting an agenda. You have the, the zoning statute. So if you have a, if you satisfy the open meeting law for tonight, but not tomorrow night, the only way you could meet tomorrow night would be to continue tonight. But I think that in talking with town council, the safest course is to continue from tonight to tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Vote tomorrow night to continue the public hearing and for two weeks until the 16th, and then I think you will, on the 16th, you should not have any notice issues. I'll defer to town council on that point, but I think you'll be, you shouldn't have any notice issues. You'll be able to address it on the merits based on our agreement on an extension. So in two weeks, we'll do it so tomorrow night. There will be a defect if we follow that. Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I defer to... Well, I, 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 I mean, as, as counsel just pointed out, there are two different statutes going on. We have 40A, Section 15, which well, is... we can obey both, can't we? Well, um, you know, I, I do have to... The open meeting law requires 48 hours notice. Now, we can, we can, we can, we can likely continue this for, for tomorrow, a continuation of the meeting, which is properly noticed. Um, but there will always be that issue out there of... <coughs> Whether or not um, it, it creates a question, probably the safest and easiest way to do it would be to totally renotice the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So, do we have to go with the two-week publication? And You'd have to go two-week publication, and then and then not hold a hearing prior to 14 days after that. And that so that won't allow us for the 16th. Uh, no, I wouldn't. No. But, but, you know, there, there, there is the, the way of continuing this till tomorrow night and then continuing it over for two weeks. So we can continue this as part of the meeting that we had two weeks ago, but we can also at the same time do the, the motions, the movements that you mentioned, both of you, to, um, that makes it a fresh start also. <coughs> Yes, through you, Mr. Chairman, I would agree, uh, Mr. Simons, uh, as Mr. Blake mentioned earlier, 
that you have probably most of meeting tonight. You can vote to continue tonight's meeting to tomorrow night. Is anyone who was aware of tonight's meeting and posting, they would be obligated to be aware of the continuance of tonight's meeting to tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, you can then vote, take a vote to continue the public hearing to the 16th because you have, uh, obviously you have an issue with meeting room space. But tomorrow night's meeting isn't posted. But, but, but it would be a continuation. It would be continuous from tonight. Once a properly posted meeting is made, Mr. Chairman, you are allowed to continue that meeting to a, a fixed date the same way you originally continued your zoning board meeting originally that, to tomorrow night. That comes right back to my argument. This is a properly posted meeting. Everybody in this room is here. Uh, this is just silly. Mr. Chairman, I mean, the reason, Mr. Chairman, there are the reason I understand the meeting, I wasn't here. I just, I found out about this because of the newspaper and Mr. Holtcraft calling me. The meeting was originally scheduled for tomorrow, August 2nd. My understanding was moved back to August 1st because Mr. Holtcraft has a planning board meeting. I mean, he is part of this. I understand we have counsel for the petitioner and counsel for the town talking to each other, but he has rights. And I am his attorney, and it was originally scheduled for the 2nd, continued without him in the room, and moved back to the 1st because there's a planning board meeting. So under this, this jerry-rigged procedure we're putting together, they're gonna move it to the second, which he can't be at because of the planning board meeting. And without him in the room or counsel there, we're gonna continue out for 14 days in order to jerry-rig the procedure. It makes sense for the board and the taxpayers of Brookfield to start fresh, to be able to rush to the finish line here when he cannot be there tomorrow night because of the planning board meeting, which is why I was moved to tonight, and specifically move it forward in order to meet some deadline, why not give him his proper notice and then properly advertise it and move forward that way? Otherwise, and, it just and he, he, Again, he was at the first meeting. He, just, he was, but at the same time- And he knew about this meeting verbally from the town clerk and myself. But, but he has rights. Statutes exist, notice exists because a lot of people, Mr. Chairman, are not as involved as he is. The statute exists specifically for the average citizen to be given notice of his impending rights to be heard. He may have heard about it because he comes to town hall, but we cannot sit and say, oh, because he knows we're okay. Notice requirements exist in a box to protect rights. If this board moves forward, rushing it, they're going to impair his rights, and the entire procedure will be foundationally soft. Now, my brother counsel disagree with me, but I think I'm correct, and quite frankly, why put this entire procedure in danger? Why, if you rule in his favor, it puts it in danger. If you rule against him, it puts it in danger. What is the harm to protect his rights under the statute to properly notice it? That's my point. And if it continues tomorrow, he can't be here, and that's why I was moved to tonight. So to have it tomorrow night simply undercuts him entirely. Mr. Chair, uh, through you to town council, Mr. Blake, if we did not meet tomorrow night, we took a vote tonight to continue it, properly posted it with the local paper for two weeks. Would that be advisable? Um, you, you, I don't think you'd even have to vote tonight. What, what would happen would be there's a hundred, as I pointed out, there's a hundred days. You would need the written agreement of the petitioner to agree to continue that hundred days out. And it would look like you would need to do You'd have to publish it in, in a paper for two weeks. So when, it, when is the hundred day? I believe August it's 4th. August fourth or somewhere. In the it, it, yeah, somewhere in the day. And and we have the applicant's approval to continue if we do that tonight. Well, Mr. In Chairman, general, I, general I don't. General. I'm not going to back up here, but let me make it clear. Once again, Mr. Earhart, he's making a number of seat of the pants arguments that have no legal foundation. Mr. Blake and I are working with the open meeting law and we're working with the zone extension. Those are the statutes that apply, not this so-called jury rig suggestion he's making. The only thing we're asking you to do to, to, tomorrow night is you continue tonight's meeting to tomorrow night because this is properly posted. You can continue tomorrow night. You don't need another posting under the open meeting law. And the only thing you're going to do tomorrow night is vote to continue the public hearing from August 2nd to August 16th. Mr. Holdcraft is not going to be prejudiced by the fact that you're simply voting to continue the public hearing. So there's no interference with its planning board responsibilities. And But I want to suggest, Mr. Chairman, that if that is not the result of tonight's vote, then I'm not inclined to recommend to Mr. Holdcraft that we agree to an extension. Because if, if uh, 
Attorney uh, Earhart here is suggesting that somehow that this whole thing is rife with procedural defects. Well, town council and I don't believe it is. So if he wants to challenge that on appeal, fine. In the meantime, we're looking for zoning enforcement, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, again through you, if we continue this tonight, did not meet tomorrow, because this is a properly posted meeting, we did not meet tomorrow, we rescheduled the meeting, would you be okay with extending that 100 day? No, Mr. Chairman, I, this will be the third time I've suggested following up on you this want us to meet again. You want us to meet again tomorrow? I'm just suggesting for the simple purpose, five minutes to convene, continue the public hearing to the 16th, and then that satisfies Mr. the issues. I make a motion to continue this public hearing at six o'clock tomorrow in the town hall kitchen. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So be it. Mr. Chairman, then I will provide Attorney Blake uh, and you with a written agreement to extend the date for completion of the public hearing and the date for the following decision. Jay, just so that you know, tomorrow you will need to vote to set a hearing at a date sir, date and time certain. That allows us to be It won't allow you. You, you, you need 28 days to do the date that we set has to allow us to go two weeks closer. I just want to. So we cannot set a, a meeting two weeks from tomorrow. We have to well, allow this probably three weeks possibly because of the post, because of the newspaper schedule and posting. What, what yeah. council is suggesting is that, that that we keep the string alive, the string notice alive. The first uh, meeting was scheduled for July 19th. It was continued to the second. So are you recommending not posting in a public paper? I'm I, I believe that it, it's, it's a string and it, do, it, it need so not be So tomorrow done. we can just continue it for another two weeks? I, I, I believe that, that, that that's one way of doing it. I, as I said before. And we wouldn't violate anything if we didn't post it? Well, I said, as I said before, the best way to do it would be to, to restart the entire public hearing. But th th it's, it's up to the, to the petitioner at this point because there is a, a hundred day constructive grant if we don't. They're so, only willing to allow us to go this, this, so this. Mr. Chair, through you, do you want us to continue it tomorrow night for two weeks or do you want us to properly advertise in a local paper? Which no, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I want you tomorrow night, I, I respectfully request that you vote to continue the public hearing to the 16th. I feel confident, Mr. Blake and I spoke before the meeting began tonight, I feel confident that you provided sufficient notice for the first public hearing, as he suggested this is part of a string. Mr. Chairman, I was involved in a public hearing before a zoning board on a comprehensive permit some, back, some time back. We had almost nine months worth of hearings, continued from month to month to month to month, with no intervening new publication notice to abutters, so that you can continue, and anyone who the public notice puts the, the community and the abutters on notice of the first public hearing, and then it's their responsibility to keep up with the continuations of the public hearing, whether they're here or not. Mr. Chairman, one last comment, please. Um, I understand they've talked about, they believe one thing and I believe others, like other council. They have yet to point to any statute that specifically says that the aggrieved party um, covers the public notice requirement. I would ask the board before it moves forward with this procedure to provide my office proof that he got the original notice of this original proceeding because the chain, I think we can all agree, the chain requires it to begin with the property owner getting proper notice of the hearing. Public notice doesn't do it for a property owner. We can all agree he must get original proper notice and we believe he was never served with the original complaint in notice of hearing first time. This entire chain has been effective from the get-go. So I'm trying to help everyone out by saying, let's start again with proper notice. But if the town can't provide a certified mail proof, a constable service proof, this entire procedure is defective. I can say it over and over again, he can keep disagreeing, but where's the proof of service? Where's the proof of service, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, as you've observed and responded multiple times, he was here, Mr. Holocraft was here at the last meeting. So by being present and by getting up and walking out, he's essentially waived his right to participate in that hearing. He hasn't waived his right to participate for a continued hearing on the 16th. And with counsel, he can present his defense at that point. So this argument, once again, is seen in the pants. There's no legal foundation to this argument. 
Thank you. I would like to, um, I'd like to just reiterate the motion that was made and second it and we all voted on is to meet tomorrow night at six o'clock to convene for another meeting to be held on August 16th at six o'clock. Is that? Done and we are done for tonight. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, did, did we vote on that motion? Oh yes, we did. We all. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, yep. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk, let's talk about uh, agreement. We got to put this in writing with the council. Yeah. Yeah. Um,